Hello fellow hunters. Wide gunlands sure is a hellish weapon to compare each other. Even harder than it was to compare normal gunlances. This is mainly because we can no longer ignore the status and elemental damage of the gunlances. Pokes are quick and weak with only a 24% motion value while elements are only affected by the monster elemental hit zone. When hitting an elemental zone of 15%, every point of element has around the same value that a point of raw. And more pokes means more buildup of poison or blast. And we got some gunlands with special rules, like Tigrex Brutish Strike and Diablos Dulling Strike. Already did the work with these kinds of skills. They practically function by cancelling the effect of the negative affinity. And let not forget about the exploit skills affecting shelling. Aquatic exploit improves melee and shelling damage by a 10% while flying and wyvern exploit adds a 5%. You may be asking why I'm calling dragon exploit wyvern exploit. This is because it is a mistranslation and does nothing against dragons but works against every monster that has wyvern in their type name, by example flying wyvern or fanged wyvern. For comparing these weapons I have established a limitation of 10 points of attack skills in all gunlands with those that include an extra slot getting them. This gives room for at least protective polish 2 and evade extender 1. For charms, you can use any that gives you 3 points towards the build. By example, a critical boost 2 guard with 1 level 2 slot or a protective polish 2 with evade extender 1. Since a lot of skills are decorations you have no limitations on what your charm should be. For attack boost based builds you will need an attack boost 3 charm or equivalent. These are meant to be the barely usable damage based builds. Feel free to downgrade these to make place for more guard, evade extender or protective polish. The two first places are very suited to be downgraded and still be powerful. I also assume you are using damage buffs like Mega Demon Dugs, eating Dango Booster and carrying power charms. For adjusting I increase the raw by 30 points. This gives a more real comparison since the gap between low raw and high raw is not really that big. In fact, you can get even more buffs by example using an attack palico. The meter of comparison between the gunlances is the poke plus shell damage. It is a disgrace that wide unique features have failed hard. The worm stake only use is to get a stun every hunt. And the supercharged shells are a joke. So the main damage source you will get is poking and shelling. These are the gunlances I have selected as the best ones. The only interesting omission of the list is the Pew K gunlance that allows for a powerful poison build using Camellia's armor. That gunlance requires its own video and analysis to see its potential. Let's start from the bottom. Number 7. Admiral Gunlance. I totally loved this gunlance in the version 1.0 for a lot of reasons. It had great out of box sharpness and affinity and one slot. This allowed you to make builds impossible for the other two good wide gunlances. But in update 2.0 with the bagel set providing enough extra slots and the inclusion of equally good low cost gunlances this has fallen from grace. You need 3 points of handicraft to make it white and suffer from it. With wyvern exploit can do as much damage as Diablos and Tigrex gunlands but they aren't even the best in the list, so with the merit of being as good as others if the type of the monster is correct. This gunlance is no doubt the worst of the top ones. But still 124 damage in the 60% hit zone is still only 3 points away from the best one, a mere 2% difference but the best one is not using exploit. Number 6. Corn Popper. Corn Popper without its aquatic exploit is no good but with it is tied and even can surpass the best gunlance. Being also the strongest shell type with better worm stake and the most powerful shells saves it from being useless and from the bottom position of the list. You may even do something special with it using Mind's Eye and Bludgeoner to destroy monster's legs. It is not the best all-around gunlance but has a unique niche. Numbers 5 and 4. Diablos and Tigrex gunlance. I'm packing them together because the difference is minimal. Tigrex wins by a lone point of damage at various hit zones and that is all. Observe in the tables how I include the theoretical more powerful builds with offensive guard. The problem of these builds is that when OG is not activated, their damage drops hard and if half your attacks don't have it active you are actually losing damage. The OG builds can actually beat the best gunlance and this is the reason why these gunlances are in this position. Number 3. Almudrin. Another niche gunlance. 
The difference between this and the other and the reason why is so high in the list is how absurd powerful is when fighting a monster with 25% or more water hit zone. With this build, each water attack does 20 extra damage compensating for the low sharpness and raw damage. This weapon is also the most powerful wide 5 being a bit better than corn popper. And also gets points for being the coolest design of every single gun lens. Just don't use it versus monsters and vulnerable to water damage. A good craft. Number 1 and 2. Buzzle and Barioke Gun Lances. Barioke Gun Lance is a straightforward way the best wide gun lens. It has fine raw, only needs one point of handicraft and has an absurd 40% affinity. That much affinity is even a problem because you can't use Kaiser Helm with it. Don't try to get 100% affinity with it. Is not worth it versus getting more points in other things. With only Handicraft 1 and Critical Boost 3 this is ready to use. I mean it already does 121 damage in a 60% hit zone that is 3 points less than Tigrex and you have saved yourself 3 slots for Protective Polish 3, Evade Extender 2 and Wirebug Whisperer 1 by example. Offers the highest potential damage while keeping a good base power. This weapon also sports a mediocre 27 ice value. This means from 3 to 8 extra points of damage depending on the monster and almost half the monsters of the game have a 10% ice hit zone at least. This makes Barioke Gunlands even better than the others. Bagel on the other hand is hard to measure. The raw difference is from 4.7% to 6% but in exchange, it has blast. With the ramp up as a 23 blast value. This is 2 points less in each poke versus Tigrex Gunlands in exchange for making explosions. The advantage of Blast is also that it doesn't need weak points or hit zones. I have no doubt this should be better than Tigrex Gunlands. The real question now is if it is good enough to bridge the distance between this and Barriot Gunlands and that requires a deep analysis that will be the target of a future video. If you aren't sure if you should craft this because it costs a gem, don't do it until I got the results. Unless your desire is doing explosions. Then pick it up please. The conclusion here is that the real best all-around craft is Barioke Gunlance. The others have niches where they excel. And Bagel Goose Gunlance has a lot of potential but is uncertain or dependent on the monster since different monsters get different blast damage. It is similar to PUK Gunlance that while its stats are bad, the status may make it useful. And this is all today. I hope it was useful for you and remember that if you want more videos like this to subscribe. See you in the hunt.